Pocono Raceway decided to go all 2011 Kentucky on Sunday. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. If you went to Pocono on Sunday, well, if you made it there, you saw a pretty decent race, but if you didn't make it into the track on time, well, you probably sat in gridlock traffic outside of the facility, just hoping that maybe you would eventually make it to the track and get to see some of the race that you paid for. A lot of people ended up just turning around and going home as traffic was gridlocked for miles around the facility. Now, there were certainly factors that played into this. One, Pocono is selling out now. You reduce it from two races down to one race, you increase the demand for that one race, people want to go and you end up having sellout. So the track is having to hold all of these people and the f infrastructure around the racetrack probably isn't really suited to hold that many uh, that many fans, which is certainly an issue to talk about. But you also throw some severe weather in uh, during the pre-race or, well, leading up to the race in the morning and you have a number of parking attendants. Pocono pulled all their parking attendants, took them to safety, completely understand that. But that right there stopped people from parking and caused this massive backup out onto the streets where some people just abandoned their cars on the side of the road like it was Kentucky in 2011 and just started walking to the racetrack like it was some sort of pilgrimage in hopes of seeing the race that they paid to, you know, to eventually watch. Some people waited in their cars and eventually got to a parking lot well into stage three and they just turned around and went home because they didn't want to walk into a racetrack, watch the end, go back and sit in the same traffic that they just sat in for the last, I don't know, upwards of four to five hours. Now, of course, there's going to be your mouth breathers on the internet that are going to take exception with this and be like, this sounds like a time management problem by the fans fault. If you follow NASCAR, you would know that you have to show up early. Yeah, well, you should have to show up so early that you can fly to England in the same amount of time. That's just absolutely preposterous. That's a failure on the track and the authorities part for getting people into the racetrack and not having a proper traffic flow set up. Now, of course, the track in their transparency posted a statement and they said, hey, hand up. That's on us. We had to pull our people into safety. Completely understand, right? Severe weather. Don't want to see anybody get struck by lightning. Don't want to see anything bad happen to anybody. Understand that. There needs to be some sort of plan in place if that happens to avoid a situation like this again because a number of people just sat literally miles from the racetrack and had absolutely nowhere to go a number of drivers dealt with the same thing spotters crew members everybody just struggling to get into the racetrack some people did some people never did and that's highly unfortunate because as we've seen with kentucky speedway an issue like that can mar the entire reputation of that event for literal decades afterwards i mean heck people still talk about kentucky 2011 and the absolute disaster that that was having all of these cars thousands of cars and fans stranded out on i-71 people just abandoning their cars on the side of a major interstate just to walk to the racetrack to hopefully get there and if you've been to kentucky that's a hilly walk and not exactly one you probably want to do in july but people did it so even up until 2020 when the last event was held there people still talked about the 2011 kentucky nascar cup series race which got national attention i think heck it was in the new york times even that's how bad the traffic situation was and for pocono they had something that resembled that on Sunday, because when you look at the photos of this, there are cars just stopped waiting to get into a racetrack. And now I get it. It's in a rural area. It doesn't see high traffic like this very often. But again, you have to have procedures in place to ensure that people can get in and out of the racetrack and then throw in the fact that it had a torrential downpour there uh, leading up to the race. And we had a number of people on Reddit were talking about how they got stuck in the mud. They had to have the uh, tow truck from the track come pull them out. People trying to push each other out just does not sound like a very fun day at the racetrack. And that's unfortunate because when you go to the racetrack, you just want to go see the race that you paid for, have a fun time, and instead people are sitting in traffic for entirely too long. They have Dave Moody from SiriusXM yelling at them on, on Twitter, laughing at them, which is just not how you should handle the situation at all. Claire B. Lang was catching ricochet shots out here because she was laughing at the fact that the traffic man was so poorly handled, but instead it looked like she was laughing at this person for being stuck in traffic for multiple hours. Just all around bad look for, for everybody on Sunday, and it sucks. It was a disaster they didn't know what they were doing it was you know an absolute catastrophe in terms of getting people into the racetrack and hopefully you know hopefully next time they head back it gets better but man i just can't imagine sitting through that once again indianapolis 500 uh 2023 got off sat for two and a half hours to go two miles and that was enough to absolutely drive me insane waterboard me putting me in isolation don't stick me in a car surrounded by a bunch of other people all trying to get to the same spot and then you have people going absolute anarchy trying to swerve around each other diving into the parking lots of businesses trying to figure out ways to get around it was absolute 
chaos. So I feel bad for everybody that got stuck in a situation yesterday because a lot of those rural roads, you're just kind of stuck on those roads. It's all one direction in and then one direction back out. So it's not like you could just do a U-turn and head back out. So some people said that they were just driving through the woods. Some people were just driving through the median trying to get to where they were uh, going away from where they were supposed to be going. So sounds like a nightmare all around. Hopefully it gets fixed for for next year because man, that is just not how you want to spend your weekend. But hey, credit to the track for saying hand up. That's our fault. I got some blisters on my hand in case anybody (laughs) sees that right there. Uh, Hand up. That's our fault. And hopefully they get rectified for next year because Pocono is a fun event. You might not like the race, but hey, people show out for it. It's typically interesting strategy wise. And, you know, it's never going to fall off the calendar, but I don't want to see people stop going. I have seen a number of people say that this has always been a bit of a traffic heavy race in terms of getting in and getting out. But Like I said before, you shouldn't have to show up eight hours, seven hours before an event just to make sure that you can get into the parking lot. That's a little bit crazy. Yeah, showing up 30 minutes before, that's kind of too close. If you don't make it in, that's kind of on you. But man, you shouldn't have to show up more than two hours from an event and worry about getting into the racetrack and finding your seat. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.